This rather interesting unit from AliExpress was designed as an explosion-proof test box. And by explosion-proof, they don't mean that you can use it in a gasoline station or in a mine or anything like that. What they mean is it prevents products exploding when they're being tested. It's worth mentioning that, well, I'll demonstrate it. I'll plug it in right now. So I'm plugging it in with a little non-polarised plug. And we can test these. These connections here are speaker terminals not really rated for 240 volts. Let me bring in the meter and we shall probe them. So I'll set this to the 700 volts AC range and I shall probe into these terminals. So that is on and we'll just probe in like this and it's 243 volts across those. So just be aware that this isn't some low voltage test device. It is just mains voltage but it's got an interesting feature and this is the explosion proof bit you see if I stick a bulb into one of the test sockets and you've got a switch for each one and I turn it on then the bulb will light but it's worth mentioning if I turn this switch off it will go out and there's a reason for that if I now screw this bulb in here and this is the explosion proof bit this is a traditional tungsten bulb and if I now turn it into the test mode this uh, bulb is now in series with this. If I can demonstrate that by unscrewing this slightly. And it goes out. And it means that if you were testing bulbs in this unit and one of them is faulty, instead of going bang, it would actually just make this light bulb light up. Let me demonstrate that. So I shall take this out at the moment. I shall turn the power off. I don't trust this, so I will unplug it and I'll put a little wire link into this test socket here. So now this is emulating a short-circuited product. And if I now turn it on, the light is now protecting against a massive electrical explosion. It's worth mentioning that the, there was a demonstration video of this showing how it could protect against this. And the Chinese chap that was demonstrating it was just basically fingering wires on the live output. Uh, it's worth mentioning that even with a bulb in series like this, it's not going to stop you getting a violent electric shock. But anyway, let's open this. Oh, there's a fuse. What's the fuse? It's a glass fuse. Now, it's worth mentioning, uh, in applications where you're running things from the mains, 120 volts to 240 volts, glass fuses are not really suitable because when you get a dead short circuit, they tend to explode because they're only rated to break about 35 amps. This one is rated... Uh, 3 amp fuse, and generally speaking, if you've got a short circuit across the mains, then the current, the, sh the peak short circuit current could be hundreds, thousands of amps, briefly, and uh, a fuse like this will just explode, it won't uh, break the circuit decisively. The correct fuse to use is a ceramic fuse, and a 20 millimeter ceramic fuse has a breaking capacity of about 2000 amps, I think. 1,500 amps at least. Uh, that's worth mentioning because the glass fuses can explode and they can cause us a flash over in the vicinity onto adjacent metalwork or they can um, they can continue conducting by arcing internally to the point that suffers el electrical damage to other electronic equipment. Anyway, let's open this up and see what's inside. There's quite a lot of screws here. Tell you what, I shall pause until I've got the last one out. One moment, please. And we're down to the last screw and ready for the big reveal. I do wonder how many people get electrocuted in China. I know that India has an absolutely horrific mortality rate from electric shocks, including contact with overhead lines. Uh, spudger. Just to lift this up because it is quite a snug fit. Oh, it is snug fit. It ain't coming out easy. Okay. Oh, they're quite big bases, the lights. So here's the incoming supply. And it does go to a double pull switch look of it. Then the output comes. Oh, that's quite odd. Right, so this is going to there. Oh, the fuse. Oh no, the fuse isn't just protecting that. It's actually going up to here as well. Um, that wire has been nipped in here. Oh, these are these are just loose by the look of it. Oh no, there is a screw holding it in. It's not been screwed fully in in this instance. Uh, so there's a switch that's actually just wired in parallel with this lamp holder. This is the short circuit 
uh, protection one. So when you turn that switch on, it's actually bypassing this lamp holder. But if it's turned off, the current has to flow through that lamp holder first. And then it really is just, right, tell you what, just give me a second. I'm going to trace this wiring out. One moment, please. Okay, it didn't take too long. So the live, if well, keep in mind this is non-polarised, goes via this lamp. It goes via the lamp first and its little bypass switch. Then it goes to the fuse. The neutral is loop, just looped around everything. And then the live is uh, through the fuse, looping through these. Loop, 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 loop through here. And then the little wire tucks under there, mirror bar, goes on to the common switch bar and then the wires jump onto this and the neutrals by the look of it are just jumping straight up onto this and looping along it's very basic but you know i suppose it serves the function so i suppose it's useful it's a handy tip to know that uh, you can put a load in a series of things i see some of the uh, in big power supply like welder repair channels they have a heater in line with it because even a heater, it's going to limit it to, say, a one kilowatt heater in the UK would limit it to four amps. Um, a two kilowatt heater would limit it to eight amps. And it's good for testing things initially when you turn them on. And if uh, the heater or a bulb lights up instantly, then you know that uh, there's a short circuit you have to deal with that stops you blowing up expensive electronics. And that's pretty much what this thing's for. But there we have it. It's interesting. As I say, not totally compliant with uh, other countries, but still a very useful device. It's also worth mentioning that when you screw this bulb in, squeaky, squeaky, that's all exposed. So the polarity thing means that that's just, it's not even beyond the fuse. It's when the power's turned on, this is connected to one of the legs of that unpolarized two-pin plug. But uh, interesting device. It's functional. Um, but as I say, not compliant with our standards. There are better ways of connecting things, but ultimately this is designed for factory use um, and, uh, and not home use. But that's it. It's interesting. It was well worth exploring and seeing what was inside.